Hey, I'm back. This is Chandler for Melda Productions, and today I'm going to be going over the dynamic detection in M Dynamics, but this also applies to M Dynamics MB or even M Turbo Comp. Somebody asked me about this, and they're you know a little bit confused about the detection, which I understand because to be honest, I'm a bit confused about it too. There's a lots of things in there, and a lots of things in there can be a little bit confusing. There's more controls than I've ever seen in probably any different uh, you know, compressor or anything. So I'll try to explain them and go over them. And I'll try to give you a few examples for some of them because I know it gets really involved and sometimes you're not sure exactly what's happening. So I'll show you. Here we have the dynamic detection. We have the basics here like the attack and release. It's those I'm assuming you already know. The peak hold, what this will do is once you actually compress something, you can set this to keep it at that peak for a number of milliseconds so it doesn't quickly move up and down. And this is because some things will like fluctuate in volume really quickly. And if that happens, what it'll do is it's going to cause your signal to you know, like a decrease or increase the amount of gain reduction very quickly. And you don't always want to do that. If you use this when it hits that peak, it's not going to come down for, in this case, 4.9 milliseconds. So that way it's not just jumping up and down really fast. Now, sometimes you don't need that, but sometimes you do want that. You don't want it to sound like it's like stuttering or something. Or if it goes up and down too fast, it'll actually cause distortion. So that's why you might want to use peak hold. Another reason you might want to do that is if you're using it with like the look ahead. If I, I believe if I set the look ahead and the peak hold to the exact uh, same values, this will work for something like a limiter. So that way it will limit the peak, but it won't move up and down so quickly that it causes distortion. So that's something else you can do. Uh, next one, the RMS length. This is similar. It's instead of using the peak of your signal, you'll kind of like average it out. So this will smooth out the sound. So if you're having that, you know, transient or something else, the signal that's just moving up and down really, really fast because of, you know, whatever reason, the nature of the sound, this will kind of smooth that out. So instead of, you know, just doing the absolute peak, it'll take, I guess, maybe a five millisecond chunks here if you want. And so that will give you a smoother sound. So you're gain reduction isn't moving up and down or if you're using the gate the gate isn't like moving up and down which causes like a chattering thing uh hopefully i explained the look ahead and the release modes these are a little bit confusing too so we have the manual release mode and that just means it just uses the release here whatever time you set it at will be your release time that's self-explanatory however there's these other modes like the automatic mode if I set this, it's going to automatically change the release based upon how long I am above the threshold. So whatever your signal is, if it goes above this, whatever it is, let's say uh, negative 20. So whenever my input signal goes above that, it's going to you know calculate how long is it above here. So like let's say if it's above here for five seconds, it's probably going to give me a really long release time. But let's say if it just jumps here and goes back, like maybe it's a snare drum, goes over and goes back in like 10 milliseconds, it's going to give me a shorter release time. Uh, same thing, automatic fast is the exact same thing, I believe, except it's going to move just like a little bit faster. So maybe this one, if it was over for five seconds, it might give me a, a 1000 millisecond release. Automatic fast might give me a 700 millisecond release. For example, I'm not sure if that's actually true, but. Just giving you some numbers there to give you an idea of what it does. Linear is the same thing as automatic, except instead of using the time, it's going to do the level. So in, if it's negative 20 and I go all the way up to like negative 3, that's going to give me a longer release. Whereas if I go up to negative 18, it's going to give me a shorter release. So it's just going to be based on the level for the linear modes. Whereas the automatic modes, it's made, it's based upon the time. A linear two, I believe, is a little bit, uh, I guess, faster. So it's the exact same thing with automatic and automatic fast and linear one and linear two. Just remember that the linear ones are involved with the level. The optical is the same as the linear. It's just in reverse. Whereas the linear, the higher 
in volume it is, the longer the release. For the optical, the higher in volume it is, the shorter the release. So if it goes way over, you're going to get a short release. If it just goes a little bit over the threshold, you're going to get a longer release. So that's how that works. And this, as I said, works with the gate as well. Now, if we go into the settings, we get a lot more things in here. And I'll try to describe these. We have the true RMS, so this will give us a mo much uh, more accurate RMS detection. This one, if I turn it off, it'll, I believe it gives us a little less or CPU usage. This will give us more accurate CPU usage, so you can do that yourself. A uh, true hold, I believe, is similar to like the peak hold, but it'll give you a little bit more accurate, but I'm not sure about that. If you really want to know, you can go in here and read all of this uh, yourself. So here it says, when disabled, hold is implemented using a special filter which catches peaks and maximizes the level detector signal input by those peaks. So it'll give you a more detailed and more in-depth uh, explanation of all of these. I just want to give you something simple. If you really want to know, read it yourself. Uh, Psychoacoustic pre-filtering. So this will filter things just so it's more like what your ears actually hear as opposed to uh, what a machine will detect. So our ears aren't machines, so certain frequencies, like uh, I believe the area between, was it 1,000 and 4,000 or 2,000 and 4,000 hertz are very sensitive to the human ear. So this will maybe filter things so it acts more like the human ear. If you have it off, it's just going to be, you know, plain detection scientifically. Uh, spectral smoothing, I believe, is somewhat similar. It's not going to be based upon the human ear, but it will be based upon the sound spectrum. Super fast attack. So this is like if you really need your attack to be super fast and not let anything through, use the super fast attack. I believe this will not allow your like a level to go past or lower than zero, I believe. So it's always ready to move. And then do not limit above zero decibels. So this means if it goes up and like clips, basically it'll still detect it. Uh, I don't know. I don't like my signals clipping, so I probably wouldn't use that anyways. The thing you probably want to check out the most is this, the envelope detector. This is really confusing. So what's going to happen here is it determines how fast or how slow this detection is. So of course you have the attack and you have the release here, but this determines like how fast before we start even registering the attack and before we get started or the release, how fast before we start the release stage. I actually think of it like this. If you have a security guard and your threshold is like a line and your security guard is watching it, if I have it on the slowest mode, it's like my security guard is, you know, playing on his smartphone and some bad guy goes across this line and he gets about like 10 meters across it. I'm like, hey, wait, wait, wait. Security guard stops him and pulls him back. Whereas if I have it on like the fastest mode, that means my security guard is really on it. And as soon as his foot starts crossing that line, my security guard tells him to stop. That's what this is going to do. And you're thinking like, okay, like what difference does that make? But there are times it does actually make a difference and it sounds different. What it tells you in here is for these different modes that one of them, like the slowest modes, will cause pumping and the faster modes will cause distortion. I'll let you hear this. I have examples. I know I've been talking a lot, uh, but I'll let you hear it. I have some white noise examples. So here's some white noise. This the first one is no compression. Okay. Now let's hear that. I have a ton of compression on there, but this is with the slowest settings, the slowest for the attack and the release. So first no compression, then the slowest setting. You see that huge transient and you heard that like spitting sound? That's what I mean by slowest. It's going to let some of that first initial transient through if we have that on there. But now let's his listen to the fastest setting. Now you can still see the transient, but if you heard it, it's not as loud. 
you can see it's cutting it off sooner and you're thinking like, oh, you're just changing the attack times, but I'm not actually changing the attack times. The attack times and release times, uh, for, I think the attack, I forgot what the release was, but the attack time for, for both was 10 milliseconds. But you can hear the difference between fast and slow. So you can hear this one, this would be an example of pumping, although in this case it's uh, maybe, I don't know, like spitting, I guess. And this one is giving us distortion, but you can't hear it because I'm using white noise, so you can't hear it. But here's another example. I do the exact same thing. I'm using a 10 millisecond attack and a 10 millis or zero millisecond attack and 10 millisecond release. I'll let you see the first one. This is just sine waves with no compression. Okay, now this, you're gonna get some distortion, but this is the slowest, and you can listen to the amount of distortion. You can hear that, it's like, this sounds like a different type of wave, it almost sounds like a square wave. I'll let you hear it again. But it's not too loud. Now, I'll let you hear the fastest one, you should hear more distortion. That sounds like a pure square wave. I can even show you using this analyzer here, like this. If you look at it and look where the, dis actually, I'll let you hear the first one. If you look at it, it should just look like a sine wave. You'll see one peak. For the slowest, you'll see some peaks here, but they're not too high. And for the fastest, you'll see more peaks, which indicates more distortion, like this. So you can hear more distortion. Now, these aren't very musical examples, but I hope this demonstrated what the differences are, and you might think about when you'd want to use one mode versus the other. So in these cases with white noise, I really care about this pumping, but I may not care about the distortion, so I might want to use the fastest setting if I'm using doing something like a, maybe a snare drum or some other type of drum because the distortion may not matter it's not harmonically related however if i was doing something like uh, maybe a harp or something i really do care about the amount of distortion i don't want it distorting all the all over the place or maybe i don't maybe i do i don't know but if i care about that i might want to use a slower setting and i may not worry so much about this i'm using extremes amount extreme amounts of compression here and it's causing pumping but i may not use that much so that gives you an example of what they do and how they do it and if you're wondering what are these at the bottom these are the custom modes so you can use these for the attack and release and these will act similar to the release modes here but the difference is you can actually set it however you want so let's say uh actually it gives you an explanation here for this it says for example if you set the graph to 100 across the x-axis then the results are similar to slow mode so if you had a uh, slow mode here like that or sorry this would be about the same as the slow mode but of course I could change it and do something like this. And so it will depend on like, oh, maybe it's kind of slow like here, but then it speeds up, etc. And you might want to do that if you want to really like balance the amount of pumping versus distortion. I don't know if I'd ever go that far into it, but if you want to, you definitely can. So I hope that gave you an idea of what this dynamic detection can do there's a lot here and it can be you know really useful at times but most of the time to be honest i don't mess with it i should also say it's m in m dynamics mb same thing and if you're wondering it's an m turbo comp in here it's just under the followers so you're going to find it in settings here like this so everything is the same it, I, it's set on custom here but you could set it this if you want to.
And these will give you lots of different shapes. And for M Turbo Comp, I think this is the way they actually simulate lots of different compressors. So I don't know if I'd be going through and, you know, doing this myself, but if you thought, you know what, I kind of want to make my own compressor. And I like the attack of such and such compressor, but I want the release of another one. Or like, ah, you know, I like this one, but, you know, I want to change the attack a little bit. You can mess with that yourself and come up with your own custom compressor that sounds cool and does all sorts of interesting things. So I hope I went over this and explained everything. I know this is a really complicated topic, but somebody requested it, so I decided to do it. And hopefully this will be like a reference for anyone in the future. If you have any other questions, please leave them down below. If you like this, give me a thumbs up and be sure to check out all the plugins at melderproduction.com. Till next time, see you.